In this video, we're going to continue our discussion on the cell-derived cell derived chemicals chemicals of inflammation. And we've talked about histamine and serotonin, and they're considered vasoactive substances that cause um, vasodilation, um, cause the cell, um, the capillaries to become bigger. So more blood, more blood, and they also uh, cause them to become more porous, which is vascular permeability, increasing vascular permeabilities, which means they have more holes, so more holes, more more stuff can leak out of the blood, including leukocytes to get to the area where they need to go. And we talked about in the last video, arachidonic acid and how that's involved in um, augmenting the inflammation response and also inhibiting it towards the end of the inflammation response. Um, there are chemicals that inhibit the chemotaxis and marginization and cell adhesions of leukocytes on the endothelial walls inside the capillaries. So um, you can review that video um, if you want to. Okay, so in, in this video we're going to talk about, start talking about platelet activating factor. And that has an acronym, of course, PAF, platelet activating factor. And neutrophils, monocytes, basophils, endothelial cells, and platelets are the primary cells that produce this platelet activating factor. And it's by the action of phospholipase A2. Now, what PAF does is similar to histamine. So, let me just write here, histamine is vasoactive, right? It causes um, uh, cells to dilate, more holes, increase vascular permeability. That's what platelet activating factor does too. But it's um, 100 to 1,000 times stronger than, than histamine. And also another thing that PAF does, as soon as these leukocytes, let's say here's a leukocyte, and it diapodeses out, which means it kind of squeezes out between these endothelial cells and gets out here into the extracellular matrix, it also assists in chemotaxis, which is the process by which this leukocyte knows where to go, wants to get out here. So that's what platelet activating factor is. Now we are going to talk about a different cell-derived chemical mediator of inflammation. Now let's talk about cytokines. Cytokines are also, they're involved in inflammation and immune um, function. So we're not going to talk about the immune function part of cytokines, but we are going to talk about inflammation. And, there, and it's involved in acute inflammation, which is, you know, uh, minutes to hour or minutes to hours to days. And it's also involved in chronic inflammation, which is weeks, years, months. So cytokines are... Um, a kind of a big classification of, of, of chemicals and they're involved in the inflammation response and in immune function. Uh, and later in other videos we're going to talk about the immune system and all that. So one of the things that cytokines do is let's say you have a bone here and inside the bone you have um, bone marrow. And inside this bone marrow is where white blood cells are produced, which are called 
leukocytes. I hope by now you know that white blood cells are called leukocytes. Um, however, these leukocytes are are created in this bone marrow, and leukocytes are used up. They're used up in in any kind of inflammation response, and they undergo apoptosis at the end, and they are replaced. They need to be replaced. So cytokines, some cytokines go in there and they stimulate these white blood cells precursors to say, hey, you know, these leukocytes are, are, are we're losing leukocytes because there's an inflammation response and they need to be replaced. So some cytokines um, start to stimulate um, um, these, these precursors to make more leukocytes. Cytokines are also molecularly classified as interleukins. And interleukins, inter means between, and leukins refers to leukocytes. So cytokines are classified as um, messages, if you will, so interleukins are messages between leukocytes. So messages between leukocytes. Now this is not a hundred percent right all the time. I mean, there's some you know some scientist out there that wants recognition, so he'll name name some chemical messenger between two leukocytes before be. Um, after his name, but you know, for the most part, interleukins are are messages between leukocytes. It's how leukocytes um, talk to each other and talk between, send messages back and forth. The two most common cytokines are in acute inflammation are tumor necrosis factor and interleukin one. These are the two most common um, uh, cytokines in acute inflammation. And tumor necrosis factor already had its name for a historical reason. That's why it's not called another version of interleukin. And in our later, we're going to talk about chronic inflammation. And there's interleukin-12, which is uh, a common cytokine in um in chronic inflammation. So let's talk about tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-1. So tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-1, they both act at the site of inflammation, the site of inflammation. And what they do is, um, let's say here is a blood vessel blood vessel, what they do is they promote um, leukocyte adhesion. So let's say you have a, a nucleus here. This is a leukocyte, and it's flowing along here during the in the bloodstream, and the it, it Tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-1. So tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-1 uh, cause endothelial activation. And what that means is that these little endothelial cells here that line this blood vessel here, You'll have to go back and review the um, leukocyte activation video and recruitment video, but there's little there's little chem or little proteins that stick up on these endothelial cells when these endothelial cells are activated by now we know tumor necrosis factor and interleukin one that attach to the corresponding proteins on these leukocytes. So when these leukocytes 
kind of come close to here, they'll, they'll migrate over to these sides and they'll stick to these proteins. And these proteins will, will stop the leukocyte from flowing on down, down the, blood, the bloodstream in the capillary. And then the leukocyte will diapodes or will come out of the um, blood vessel and it will go wherever it needs to go. So tumor necrosis factor and interleukin act, do endothelial activation. Also, interleukin-1, change colors here, interleukin-1 um, increases fibroblast, fibroblast activity. And once you get outside of this blood vessel, you know, there's uh, what we call the extracellular matrix and the ECM. And there's, you know, three-dimensional space, you know, going into the screen and out of the screen at you. There's, there's proteins and there's scaffolding, if you will, to kind of keep a 3D-dimensional shape. And... You know, if these cells are out here, you know, let's say you got some pathogen out here and then you got these, this leukocyte loops around and then comes over to this site and he starts fighting, you know, destroying this pathogen or this bacteria or whatever. This, some of this extracellular matrix, this extracellular matrix is going to get destroyed. The scaffolding, um, these three dimensional support beams, if you will, they're going to get damaged. And these fibroblasts help stimulate and regrow and rebuild these these uh, this three-dimensional uh, protein proteins, these extracellular matrix. So that's what the fibroblasts do. In also also tumor necrosis factor and interleukin one um, have some systemic effects, and we'll go over those right now. So in regards to tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-1, there's a concept that's called systemic acute phase reaction. And so, as we talked about up here, you know, these, these uh, tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-1, these are chemicals that will activate these endothelial cells to promote leukocyte adhesion and to... Um, you know, the leukocyte to come out and attack these these pathogens. Now these little chemicals, these tumor necrosis factor and interleukin one, it's just let's just call them let's just make sure they're green here. Well, what happens if they enter the bloodstream? And then they get chipped off down the pipe. Well then we get a systemic acute phase reaction. And what are the signs of this systemic acute phase reaction? We have fever, lethargia, hepatic synthesis of various acute phase proteins, so that the liver is going to start producing other, other proteins and problems. We're going to get metabolic wasting, which is cachexia, which is uh, your body is just you know using up its stores and wasting away. And then you get the neutrophil release into the circulation. So neutrophils are going to start to release into, into the circulation. And then you're going to get a release of the adrenocortical hormone. So this adrenocorticotropic hormone is from the anterior pituitary gland, if you remember from physiology. And that, um, you know has a cascade of events but it ultimately it goes down to the adrenal glands you know you got a kidney here and then on top of each kidney you have this adrenal gland and it this specifically is going to um, secrete glucocor glucocorticoids so this systemic acute phase reaction, this fever, lethargia, you know, when you have a disease or, or an infectious disease or you have um, an infection of some sort, you know, the and you feel these kind of symptoms, if you will, these fever and lethargia, that's because this tumor necrosis factor in interleukin 1 is inside your bloodstream floating around and causing, causing this reaction.
So that's it for tumor necrosis factor in interleukin-1 and for the platelet, platelet activating factor. See you in the next video.